Let's design some brand new Pokemon. That's right, it's time once again to make some original designs and even some evolutions to pre-existing Pokemon all under one common typing today. The Ghost type. Why? Well, we need to balance out our Pokedex, and Ghost is one of, if not my favorite Pokemon type. So let's have some fun. All of these new Pokemon will inhabit Arova, my fan-made Pokemon region based on the US state of California, and the setting of Pokemon Carbon and Silicon, my fan game video series. If you're new and you haven't checked out all the prior videos in that series, go ahead and watch them. Since after this video, we're going to be about two-thirds of the way done with the Pokedex, and we're soon going to move on to the final Legendary, Gym, and Story videos. But without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce some brand new Pokemon. First up on today's ghostly roster, let's identify some of California's spookiest tales and sights as inspiration. I initially wanted to create a generic three-stage ghost line based on the Dark Watchers, supposed apparitions on the Santa Lucia mountain range known for their shadowy figures and their glowing eyes. However, I wanted there to be a bit more. We already have some iconic generic shadow Pokemon. So instead, why don't we turn to Alcatraz? That's right, this iconic island off the coast of San Francisco is known for plenty of ghost stories. During Alcatraz's time as a maximum security prison, in the early to mid-20th century, both prisoners and wardens reported dozens of unsettling encounters, feeling cold chills in the hallways, hearing moaning and crying late at night, and the feeling of being watched. All of that is just perfect for a ghost type Pokemon, don't you think? But instead of just creating a ghostly figure, why don't we do what many iconic ghost Pokemon do and have it be a spirit, possessing some kind of real world object. Aside from Alcatraz's ghost stories, much of its dark reputation revolves around the attempted escapes. Though none succeeded, many prisoners created decoy heads to feign their presence in their cells while they tried to escape. That was a common method, alongside the use of pillows to resemble a human body as a decoy. So I've explained enough. Why don't we create a ghost Pokemon inhabiting the pillows left behind by former sinister souls who plotted their escapes from Arova's equivalent to Alcatraz? Introducing Decrobe, the decoy Pokemon. Decrobe are said to be lonely souls who have been left behind. They inhabit abandoned sites, hiding in shadows and spooking those who venture through. Playful and curious, they can puff up their quilt-like bodies to frighten or prank whomever they please. Alongside looking like an actual pillow, I also wanted this Pokemon to closely resemble a sheet ghost, to amp up the spook factor by including some stereotypical Halloween iconography, as well as making this Pokemon kind of look like a cartoon character from the early 1930s, paying homage to Alcatraz's most famous years around that time period. I hope I've succeeded at creating a cute first-stage ghost who would mainly be a benevolent, curious prankster. Now it's time to evolve Decrobe into a more sinister Pokemon that would incorporate the attitude of Alcatraz's more famous residents. Introducing Offquilter, the Enforcer Pokemon. Offquilter are more malicious than their pre-evolutions. They're said to ruthlessly pursue anyone who wrongs them, casting shadows to terrorize and fight their foes. Despite their stuffing-like appearance, they can strike a nasty blow in close quarters. So this Pokemon incorporates more fabric overall, stitching its midsection with a patch to look like a tie and stuffing in its sheet hood to more closely resemble a fedora commonly worn by gangsters like Al Capone, one of Alcatraz's most famous residents and America's most infamous crime boss. I know we already have Honchkrow as the iconic gangster Pokemon, but I hope you like this alternate take on the concept. This Pokemon came out way creepier than I thought it would, with its stitched quilt mouth and mean expression. It definitely captures the spirit, no pun intended, of the abandoned souls who inhabit the patchwork body. I can totally imagine a mob of these Pokemon roaming around Arova's abandoned sites at nighttime and preying on weaker Pokemon. After all, these are the enforcers of the family, much like the role of the enforcer in mafia circles. Now, it's finally time to transform this possessed object mon into a more imposing and more traditional ghostly finale. Introducing Despiracoi, the Grudge Pokemon. These Pokemon roam hallowed halls and they only appear in the dead of night. They prefer to plot and scheme over brute combat, sending gangs of Offquilter to do their bidding. Known as the Grudge Pokemon, they never forget the faces of those who have wronged them. There is no containing Despiracoi. They can shed their stuffing to phase through walls as a spirit before regaining form filling its body with discarded items to assume a massive lurking presence. So this is the big boss of the evolution family. 
being rare but very powerful and violent Pokemon. I gave Despiroquai a much rounder and fuller body to show the complete transformation from a ragged, baggy pillowcase to a fully stuffed and stitched together imposing ghost. I can definitely see this Pokemon lurking in dark halls. It kind of feels like a marriage between Dusk Noir and Honchkrow, two of my favorite Generation 4 Pokemon while still feeling original. Overall, I'm proud of how this Pokemon came out despite it having such a silly concept. I guess that's why I like the ghost type, because it has so much creative liberty. So now that we've met yet another three-stage new line for Arova, let's transition to a more straightforward evolution to a familiar Pokemon. First, I'll lead off with the concept before revealing what Pokemon we're going to give an evolution to. I wanted to create a, another ghostly Pokemon, but less so focused on legends, spirits, and hauntings, and more so on the biological connotations of the ghost type. California definitely has plenty of desolate locations, far off deserts and wastelands where pretty much no animal or living thing has any chance of survival. Definitely morose locations fitting for a nice ghost type. So let's zoom in on one type of geographic oddity that I have in particular. There are plenty of locations on the west coast, like acid pools, saline lakes, and even geysers, where people have literally been disintegrated, yes, no kidding, by falling into ultra-hot and ultra-salty waters that destroy most life instantly. Except tardigrades. I'd love to make a tardigrade Pokemon, but I can't seem to draw one for the life of me yet. But getting back on track. We don't have a hot spring or geothermal kind of lake Pokemon, exactly, but Torkoal is a good enough match. After all, it's a turtle who seems to carry around some sort of super hot fluid in its back, and it discharges plenty of steam. And needless to say, Torkoal could definitely benefit from an evolution. So why don't we create an evolution for Torkoal that incorporates these acidic hot springs into its shell? Introducing Tortufa, the Sulfuric Pokemon. In Arova, Torkoal can evolve into this gentle Pokemon after being exposed to unique Sulfuric Hot Springs. This Pokemon carries acidic, super hot fluid on its back. In small quantities, it can be used to sterilize injuries, but it is scalding and deadly to the touch. It's unknown whether these properties actually help or hurt Tortufa, since its metabolism is slower than any other Pokemon and it hardly ever moves living most of its life in a calm, dormant state. Now, this Pokemon's name comes from the word Tufa, which refers to the specific types of carbonate minerals that form these hot springs, notably at California's Mono Lake, where Tufa columns make for kind of otherworldly landscapes. Of course, Arova will have an equivalent location where you could evolve Torkoal and where Tortufa would primarily be found. Plus, this Pokemon would have a whole ring of these carbonate minerals that are meant to resemble the design of traditional Japanese onsen hot springs which would encircle and contain Tortufa's own acid pool, which I gave a nice little gradient there to show the gradient present in many famous hot springs. Now, I know ghost type is kind of a stretch for this Pokemon. However, I do think it works when we circle back to this Pokemon's original concept of referencing the properties of acid pools, which, again, are sterile and hostile to all conventional flora and fauna minus a select few extremophiles, like, again, tardigrades. Some of these extremophiles are found in hot springs and other unfathomable environments. They can even survive in the vacuum of space for periods of time. In these extreme conditions, they usually enter a thing called dormancy, where they lower their metabolism and they go into an extreme form of hibernation. These animals don't sleep, eat, reproduce, or even breathe in the traditional sense in this state. They're living, but kind of barely. I find it fascinating that these animals can survive in conditions so hostile to life as we know it that they almost appear inorganic, dead, almost like a ghost, right? Again, I know it's kind of a stretch, but I hope the ghost typing for Tortufa makes enough sense to reference how this Pokemon adapts excellently to its environment and is almost like it's in a permanent version of an extremophile dormancy. So again, I hope you like Tortufa, and I hope you like my long-winded explanation of its origins, and it helps you see the beauty of ghost types, and again, how varied these designs can be depending on how outside the box you're willing to think. So there you have it. Those are my proposals for four brand new Pokemon to add to the Arova Pokedex, my fan-made region based on California, and the setting of Pokemon Carbon and Silicon. I hope you enjoyed meeting some ghost types I conjured up, and you feel possessed to show some spirits for this series by subscribing so you don't miss the next video. Also, be sure to join the Tam Valley Discord if you want to stay updated, suggest new Pokemon ideas for you to make for you guys, or even if you want to help out with illustrations, renders, or music that we could add to the final few videos that we have left in this ongoing series. Once again, I really couldn't do it without all your help. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content. Thank you.